the, uh, the objective of this workshop is to bring in to you the cell BE. We, give, we want to give you an overview of the cell BE system, the software development environments, and the cell SDK 2.0. And then we will talk about the cell BE software model and the application code, how do we port applications over from a regular traditional architectures to a cell architecture. We also you know, really want to go with you and show you how to write programs under the cell BE. Just taking a very simple programs and how do we convert a program into a cell program? What is the difference? All right, we point out the differences. Also, we also, also we, we will key to um, we will point out the, the key difference between these architectures and other architectures. The vectorizing, the SIMD, sync instruction, multiple data stream. What is the main features of this architecture? All right, we go through all of those vectorizing exercise. And then we will show you the different kind of tools that we have, development tools, the integrate development environment for the SF, we call the IDE, which is Eclipse based, the SPU timing analysis, some of the performance tools that allow you to look at and to analyze the performance behavior of the system, and also some of the tools that we have on the SDK 2.0, which we call the Feedback Directed Restructure Program, FDPR Pro. So you can input just a binary uh, of your code. And then the programs can go through the exercise, analyze your programs, and ask you, run me, run the program the first time, and give me some data, OK? And then using that data, I will optimize the program, your program, by restructuring your program. OK, so this is a little bit different than some other tool that we had before from the open source, like a, the VPA we call them visual performance analyzer. The, the VPA or visual performance analyzer just analyze the, your code, your binary code only, but not optimizing or restructuring the code. The FDPR will restructure the code for you. And then we, do, we look at some O profile. O profile is an open source um, tool available under the Linux distro. This is the system software enablement um, that we have since 2005. As you see the, the timeline over here, 2005, we released some SDK, SDK 1.0 with 1.1. We support the single board. We support the board bring up at the time, right? And then we integrate the board into a system uh, we call the cell plate. And we integrate that cell plate into the cell plate chassis. So we can form a server, and then we can you know, talk about the clustering. By the end of, la of last year, I mean, then we, we thought about things that you, you, you've you can have a, a cell broadband engine, right? And here, and some others, you know, cell plate. Can we run a, the, a traditional CPU, for example, an Opteron, right? An AMD Opteron or a, the, um, an, an Intel based system? And let those systems talk into the cell here, right? And since you guys perform a very specific function, Computational very fast, a very extremely fast, or very um, exceptionally fast. Can we talk to each other and use you, the cell BEs and accelerators, right? So this project here, the Los Alamos uh, National Labs, we uh, that's IBM sign up with these labs here, provide about sixteen thousand of the, the cell BE and sixteen thousand of the AMD Opterons connect to home clustering, right? So we form a very very large. Um, um, computer system offer a teraflops and, um, and large number of flops, whatever. But that, that, that's what the, the, the movement of the, pro pro the progression of the software from the beginning supporting a single board bring up to the system and now to the whole world, the clustering world. Here's the progression of the SDK. SDK as of now, we're on the SDK 2.0. And then since we released SDK 1.0 here, to, to support our board bring up and the, 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 the base of the cell plate. And then now we, we, are, we, have, we move it to the SDK 2.0, which provide a full blown of the, of the XFC compilers. This is the IBM compilers. We're also working with the, the new open source here, provide a GCC compilers. So we have the two compilers available all the times on the cell BE here. We also have a Linux kernels, working with Linux kernel teams uh, from, from um, from the, from the IBM labs in Germany. 
so that we can, and also in Australia, so to provide a fix and patches, so we bring in and the, um, the mainstream of Linux 2.6.18, which is loading with the base kernels for the, um, for the for that's, that's running on the cell plate. Okay, and that is also the, the basis, uh, the, the, the main. So you have an IDE here, you have a performance analysis tools, you also have a, some, um, the MAMBO, which is the simulator. Okay, this is an IBM simulator that was used to simulate the power three, power four, power five, power six. This is, this is not a, a new simulator, but it's an existing simulator has been proven and been used by IBM to simulate hardware when we develop a new hardware. That simulator is, um, we should ship the simulator of, um, with, uh, with the SDK 2.0 so we can use the, the simulator to write um, the application and, compi and compile and run it on the simulator. Okay. And this one, this SDK 2.0 running on different platforms, the FC5, Linux 86, Linux on cell, and also Linux on power. Okay, this Linux based FC5. This is the sales, survey systems software stack. We have uh, the applications working with the um, ISV uh, and universities and different labs around the world and some sector specific libraries for the, uh, for the sect application sector like AMD, aerospace and defense, um, finance, financial sector, and also some other sector like the oil exploration and so on. And we also have, so going that, we do with the, um, we have the tools, uh, an environment, the compilers, the libraries, Ordering systems and so on. These, the left, and the software stack from the from the IBM provided by IBM and some of its uh, partners, and also these are the kind of basic features that we put into SDK 2.0, overlay support, accelerated library framework, ALF, performance tooling, O profile, and so on. Now, this is the roadmap from the hardware point of view. 2006, the CME we released officially released right, and made it available, it's commercially available for you to purchase the system. We can integrate in the cell plate and the cell plate chassis. So we can form a clustering of those guys. Now, we have this, so 2006 we released the cell BE, which is a one PPE and eight SPE. We call nine of them the, uh, uh, using the process of 90 nanometers SOI, silicon on um, insulators. Yeah, thank you very much. I never remember these guys. It's SOI, SOI. And then, in 2008, we're working on now, we continue working on, I hopefully, by two th not hopefully, but we will release a two, in 2008 a version of what we call Enhanced BE, which, is, which has an uh, improvement performance in the double precision. Okay? And then by 2010, we re release another processor we call the, by that time, we, re we reduce the size using the 45 nanometer SOI, and then one teraflops processor. This guy is running about 200 gigaflops performance, you know. Um, so this one, like a five, uh, five times improvement in terms of performance, and then you're reducing the size, half the size, and uh, cutting half the size of the, of the chipset. In terms of software, we released SDK 2.0 in 2006. This is running on, on two cell BE processor here and single precision floating point affinity. Extremely high performance on single precision floating point, one gigabyte of memory, 512 uh, megabyte for each processor. Right? We connect both of them together, we form a, a, a system or a board with two processors. Two processors means, uh, two processors here mean that you have a two PPEs, right? And 16 SPE. So you have a system you know, on the same board with about um, 18, uh, 18 cores. We call it 18 cores, right? 18 CPUs. And then we move on, SDK 2.0 was just released, okay, advanced um, um, CBE here by 2000, 2007, and then we improved the, um, um, the, uh, um, the, um, the memory here from one gigabyte of memory to two gigabyte of memory. And we support 16, 16 times the PCI Express card. By the time of 2008, okay, we will provide some support for the double precision. Uh, performance improved that one from, uh, from what we have now into almost double, right? And then we do the, we, we support up to 16 gigabyte of memory. So for those applications that require a lot of memory, a lot of memory, you know, and um, 
Uh, this is the, the times, uh, for example, Java and some of the applications, you know, that's required, you know, you have to, to make the memories available and stay resident in the system memories, for example. Um, we will provide some system by 2008 to satisfy those requirements. Okay, where to get the cell B information? We, you have a lot of places to go. IBM spread out a lot uh, of information. The key site is the cell resource center at Developer Works. Okay, we call it the um, Developer Works at the um, power, dot, power zone and slash cell. And then we also maintain what we call some cor uh, a, a cell corners at the power.org, uh, the cell project at IBM Research, and so on the Alpha Works, and so on. Okay? And then for the cell educa education, we maintain a website in which we can download some of the materials, and you know, we can download all the materials. Anyway, all those are av available to you, to the public, and you want to know what's going on, so we can go and up here and download this file. The files in there. We have online courses, IBM Learnings. We are in the process of putting a lot of our courses, such as these courses, on the IBM Learning. So this will be made available to the public as well. We have podcasts at power.org and on site classes at various IBM Innovation Center. Documentation. We have, and here I have a list of documentations uh, with respect to the cell program engine. A list of them, the architecture, programming handbook, and registers, and extension of the C and C++ to support the SPU. And then, you know, the SPU description, instruction set architecture, the ISA, and abbreviations, and the SPU application binary interface, and assembly language. The documentation using the SDK, right? We have an installation guide, programmer guides, and so on. This, we also have the uh, documentation for the cell place center, the QS20 and then for the compilers, and the uh, doc documentation for the simulator, for the PowerPC base, because one of our system is based on the PowerPC architecture. And here's a list of technical articles. This is some detailed description here. We, if you get the time, you're going through. The key documents that I would like to recommend all of you to read before you, sit, you read before you do some programming is that the, the Cell BE Programming Handbook. This book is about 857 pages. It's considered as a, um, the Cell BE cookbook, right? Description, everything. So you need to know programming, you need to know architecture, you need to know anything about it, just give them there. Uh, don't print, okay, because to print that one, you kill a lot of trees. So you just print it out, you know, just get a soft copy and, and, and read it through. Okay, uh, let's move on. Developer works here, the architecture. I just, this is the, just a detailed description of what I just described in the other pages previously. We maintain some information at the, at the, cell, um, at the Barcelona Super Computing Center, we call the BCS. This, why we maintain this one? In this side, we maintain all of the open source software. GNU uh, compilers, uh, the fix, for, fix and patches for our Linux kernel, installation scripts, all of those um, and the tools, uh, Linux tools and GNU tools, we maintain those at the BCS because those are the open source and publics and IBM uh, don't want to get involved in, into this area. Okay, so, okay. Let me talk about um, Cell BE and give you an introduction. This introduction here, I will has a lot of pages. I will cut it short because we're short of times. And then it's just an introduction. You 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 will see something you know here, and then if it will remind you when I go through details, stop me and go back and say, look, you, you mentioned something here, you know, just to give me some more, some more details. Okay, overview of the cell history, microprocessor highlights, hardware components, so environment, this is the, uh, the objectives in this um, uh, uh, presentation here. And then this is an agenda. So history-wise, IBM, Sony, and Toshiba joined force in 2000, and by 2001, coming up with something like, okay, let's pick up a site, which is Austin site, right? Texas, Austin, Texas, right here. Um, and then we first formed, you know, the, uh, the first single cell BE operational in the spring 2004, two SMP, come up in the summer, and then successively release a different um, um, uh, release here, especially, you know, the, the, the cell plate was announced by IBM in February, 2000, 2000, February 8th, 2006, 
SDK 1.1 was made available in July 2006, and then uh, the GA of IBM Place Center, the QS20, in September 2006, and the SDK 2.0 available in 2006. 2006 marks is a very, very special year for IBM in terms of releasing the products and make it, the products become commercially available. Okay? And, and here's the labs, the location of those labs that are working on, on the cell, right? So, so we have it in, in North America here, we have it in, in Europe, in, in Germany, um, some place over here, and we have a large labs also in, in India as well, okay? This is the size of the cell processor, right? It's a push pins, okay, and then it's as small as your eye socket. This lady here has a very small eye socket, so we use that one. Otherwise, a larger than a hammer, we're not going to use her eye socket anyway. Right, okay. Basic design. We have, a, as we're moving on, you know, from processor design and, and different architecture and so on, among the other things like the course, the times, and we recognize the three um, gating factors that inhibits our design. The first, first thing is the power power dissipation, power consumption of, of, the, of the processor. The second one is the memory. As we move it, the data, and we design the processor to support the movement of the data, always make sure we have the data available when we need it. We create a, a memory hierarchy. Different memory laid out in our CPU. We introduce the level one, level two, level three cache, and so on. But by doing that, we make the, um, if everything is okay, we're okay. But if we're missing something, if something happened, the data is not there, and we have to fetch the data. We do have to flush the cache. We have to do you know, some other extra, t um, extra um, tasks, so that we extra um, work, so that we can bring the data in. That's called a great latency time. On the power five, we look at 75 cycles, 150 cycles. Okay, if we have a, a branch miss. So we look at the power, uh, we look at the, the memory, and we look at the frequency. We cannot you know, bring up the frequencies as high as you know, greater than 3.2 gigahertz, 4 gigahertz, and 4.5 and, and 6. You saw the history, you, went, you, you look at, if you look back a couple of years, about five years ago, we have an Intel AMD coming up with 2.4 gigahertz dual core, 2.6, 2.8. We're not, they, they're not going up to three or above three or so on because they cannot control. This is a, a um, um, reverse or what we call the, um, the, re, the inverse relationship. As you pump up your frequency, okay, you have, you will, and you will, and you have to generate more power. You have to switch in faster to, to obtain the, the frequency, the higher frequency and switching the gate faster generate more power. And we look at this one here from the IEEE descriptions, uh, publication about, um, um, I, w in, I think it's uh, 2001, and we look at different uh, process over here and, and, and the frequency, and we, we support like, you know, one gigahertz, we, we, we see the, the copper uh, materials here, then the SOI materials, and then the locate dielectrics and so on. And all of those has been used, the material used to support the, um, the, the higher frequency. Now, more loss, of course, you know, two electron system density every 18 and 24 months, but more law did not say that, you know, the, the powers, dissipation of the power consumption of those gates will, re will rise as well. Okay, so he talked about the number of transistors increased tr transistor. Transistor consists of gate, right? And then those gate switches consume power. And they, some of the gates, them even, them even not, they, they also produce a power and they consume power even when they're inactive. So we have active gates consume power, inactive gates also consume power. So by adding up a lot of powers that we generate, and we know how to design the processor, but we do not know how to control the power. That's the key point here. Where the transistor gone, right? This is key of the, from, the, um, from the, the first day, or back about 10 years, or 12, uh, 15 years ago, when IBM created the first um, PC, the first CPU, very simple. There's a, there's a 64K byte memory only, no level cache, no level two cache, nothing, right? There's no virtually, virtual memory support. 
there's no uh, super Scala microarchitecture and so on. Then, and now we introduce like the CPU, the cache, the layers, we introduce the microarchitecture, super Scala to, um, to support more, more units, the deep pipelinings. We look at some of the uh, current architectures, the pipelines like uh, going from um, 10 stage, 12 stage, like uh, 30 stages with the, with the, with the Intel base. So 30 stage is a lot of stage, right? You, you may hide in some performance here, but you introduce a long delay. Okay, if, and then, you know, it will cause a lot of real estate on your board as well. And we talk about the out of order processing. Most of the system said, okay, give me some instruction, I will decode that instruction, I will bring that instruction in and the data so on, we can run, right? Now, if something happens, I will, you know, I will leave that one and I will stack up another one and we'll get the process, you know, everything is out of order, I don't care. Okay, but that out of order support is very expensive as well. Okay, and here is the, the, um, the chart we discussed about the lithography improvements, increase the cache size, deep pipelinings, super scala, out of order processing when the trading, all of those techniques was used by various um, microprocessor designer to help or to improve performance of the processor. Okay. And here is the, um, the, the, the chart that is going a little bit more details on the, the different memory organization and so on. <coughs> the key point is here, here is on the chip level multiprocessors, okay, we can, we don't have to go through the traditional design. We can reduce the super scala, reduce the pipeline depth, reduce the speculation. Instead of out of order, we just do it in order. It's easier when instructions being bring, uh, bring in, we, 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 product, we will bring in an instruction, decode the instruction, get the data, so on, and then we execute that instruction until completion without the out of order execution. We also bring up something like we call this the CMD and the, the vector, so we can do a, a lot of operations in parallel at every cycle. Instead of waiting for the cycle complete, instead of well, vectorizing that instructions so we can bring in a number of elements, processing those elements together. And then different memory organization here. Remember, the basic organization is that when you need to run so, to execute some instruction, you get some data, you have to load that data into the reg registers, finally at the end of the food channel, whatever, and you execute it. Why don't you provide a set of registers, you know, instead of having all of those extra steps, whatever, providing the set of registers right next to your memory, right? Eliminate all these um, uh, intermediate steps. Just go straight up from the register and the memories, what we call here the local memories loading on your instruction and your data into local memories and when it's time to execute those instructions, load into the registers and voila, perform the operations. So we talked about all of these concepts, we, the basic um, concepts that we mentioned here is the accelerator hardware, accelerator concepts. And we will accelerate all of the operations and using this board here, providing, you know, let's say that we have a level two cache and if we have a, a system of memories which are coherent with the level two cache, okay, we maintain the coherency with that level two cache, right? So everything that we do, we on the, the main processor we do it very fast. And however, any in anything that we do in the local list on uh, some other uh, satellite processors or remote processors, we can do it together as well. And we maintain the coherency so we the integrity of the data always maintained throughout our system. Okay. And here we and here we say that all right now, providing on the uh, some of the these features here, we can convince or we can win over the memory wall, frequency wall, and the, the power wall. <coughs> providing a very simple set of processors, moving the data. Okay, from instead of going through the mem um, um, a, a layer or hierarchy of memory, we're going through from the locals, from the memories, down to the register right away. And don't make it run fast. We don't, we don't need to go through like a four gigahertz or five gigahertz, right? Remaining in some frequency, 
but we we don't look at anymore. Don't look at the uh, the time, okay, execution time, type of units, type of unit of war, right? Look at the number of war. Look at the number of transaction completed per unit of time. Look at the the throughput, because we provided you know a multi core, a multi processor system here. You know each of them go ahead and do something. The throughput is what it's count, right? The, at the end, how many, how much transaction, how much transaction we complete? That's what it's count. Some other micro micro architecture and decision. The large share register found local store size trade off so on. Those we think we talked about. The only issue, we can issue two instruction at every cycle. Software branch prediction. We remove the hardware support of us for the software for the branch prediction and replace that one with the software branch pre prediction and leave it this this decision to whether or not we take a branch or not taking the branch to you as a programmer you the programmer will will have to make a lot of decision when you program on this environment you will decide you know how to break up your applications you will decide you know how to how to um, partition your data okay and how to optimize your, your section of code, and you also decide you know, when you take the branch, when not to take the branch. Some of you may say that, well, we leave that to the compilers. If not, yes, the compiler will do that as well for you uh, as well. The cell concepts, it is a base on the 64-bit power. Uh, so we, we, we build the 64-bit power PC so we can leverage the applications and also the um, um, the investment that IBM and the partners have been put in, you know, for the past many many years. IBM, this is the power trees which went back to like the 15 years before, right? And we increase the uh, efficiency, efficiency and performance. Go to a non-homogeneous, co coherent chips multiprocessor. Okay, we have a nine cores, uh, and we streaming the data. We use this, uh, we provide some sort of mechanism so we can streaming the data between components extremely fast. Okay, and then we provide some in interface to the outside world, go through some, um, some the, um, 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 <laughs> the, we call the flex I.O. connection, which allow us to connect either it's a cell processor together to form an SMP system, or we go out to the, um, to the, the I.O. world to collect the data uh, from the I.O. devices. Okay, the hardware components. Let me give you some highlight of the uh, the, the, the cell BE here. This is the, the bore, all right? And we have about um, eight SPEs here. Now, if you look at this one, we still dated here, uh, 3 1907. So, Hema and I, we're still in different time zone, all right? So, forgive us if we, you know, we screw up anything, right? We have 20 here. So this is the power processing elements, and this uh, level one, level two cache, level two cache right here, and eight of the SPE inter element interconnect bus, and so on. Now this one, this board here, is, consists of about 241 million transistors. The area is about 235 millimeters squared. Consists of nine cores and ten threads. We use them. Uh, the, we we have uh, the, uh, the simultaneous multi-threading here on the power PC. So we actually support the two threads on the power PC and each of the SPE uh, is supporting by an, is represented by another another thread. So we have eight threads for the SPE and two threads for the PPE, a total of ten threads. Simultaneous threading, right? We have a uh, performance single precision greater than two hundred gigaflops and double precision about ten um, about ten times of that one, ten times less, about twenty gigaflops, uh, memory bandwidth about two hundred uh, about twenty five gigabytes per second memory. And then the I/O bandwidth about 75 gigabytes per second. The EIB, which is the one that connect all the elements together, running about 300 gigabytes per second. Top frequency is about uh, greater than 4 gigahertz. Uh, some publications, some technical publications, only published on the IBM side and some other conferences mention about 5.2 gigahertz. In the labs, we were able to achieve the reach the uh, 5.2 gigahertz, but here we just. Uh, release a system with the running at 3.2 gigahertz only. And here is the, the diagram uh, that describes our system. We have a, um, a lower portion here. We have a PPE, which is a traditional uh, processor. 
it is not it is based on the uh, 970 which is the uh, which power the Apple G5 but it, it is not the power is, uh, PC 970 it's um, it has some features but most of the features from the, the 970 was removed for example the um, the, um, the cache support, the, the branch prediction support, and some other hardware support were removed from the 970. And then this one has a level 1, level 2 cache, and, um, um, and it uh, support the VMX, the, the vectorized, uh, the vector multimedia extensions, instructions, which is a vector, a, a, which, which is um, a, a similar to Ontivex or some others, um, the vectors instruction support on the Intel architecture base. In addition to the PPE, we also have ASPE. Each SPE defined by the execution unit, a local store, and the memory flow controller. We call the MFC. Okay, this is this MFC is very important because this is a hardware base. Each SPE has one. So the the traffic of data, the flow of traffic and the transfer of data and the traffic flow between the SPE to N, between SPE to SPE, between SPE to N to the PPE, and between the P, uh, SPE and to memory, and to, to, the, um, to the bus interface controller here, which go to outside world, they can all be done concurrently, in parallel. Okay? We are not gating, our transfer here is not gating by a single FFC, but they have individual MFC for each of the SPE here. Very important concepts right here. EIB will run up to 96 bytes per cycle, right? 96 bytes per cycle, which is translated to about 300. The top maximum bandwidth is about 300 gigabytes per second. Here's the chart of describing the cell processor. <coughs> in, the, in, in the middle here, we have the power PC. We call the power PPE, level 1, level 2 cache, two-way hardware multi-threaded. Level 1 cache, level 2 cache, co coherent load and store, the VMX instruction support running at 3.2 gigahertz. Uh, we also, an outside over here, we call the SPE, APEC chips, 128 bit wide SIMD units. Outside over here, each of the SPE will have about 128 registers. Each register is 128 bit wide. As the, what that means? That means that if your instruction is about 32-bit, 32-bit instruction, okay, a, a vector instructions, if your data type is about 32-bit, you can have uh, about four data elements in that register. You can load four elements every time. So you can perform four op operations concurrently in every cycle. If your data type is um, characters, okay, 8-bit, you, you can have uh, like a 16 of them running together, so running concurrently. So it's, it's uh, very powerful in here. And we also have the interconnect right here, which connects all the elements together. And um, the description about this is that we can have a greater than 100 outstanding memory requests at any given instant of time to go through this EIB here. Memory management, we have uh, the concepts of um, Effective address, okay, on the power PC, on this one over here running at the 64-bit address, right? Each of the SPE here running at the 32-bit address, support 32-bit address and instructions here at 32-bit instructions. So we have a 64-bit address on the PPE and we have a 32-bit address on the SPE. The the memory. On the, e, on, the, um, on the PPE has to be translated down to the SPE, as well as the SPE memory address has been translated to the 64-bit address if we were, want to run some 64-bit programs on the PPE. Okay, all of those translation and memory management uh, are perform, uh, performed by the um, operations are performed by the MFC okay, with the MMU units here. Okay. And all of the um, SPE DMA access, that means that the data transferring between those two will be protected by the MFC and MMU. Okay, you, when you memory transfer, you go through this MFC. External connection, we have a 25.6 gigabyte uh, per second bandwidth here, and we have a two 
uh, connection here. One is for connecting the processor together. The other one is connecting the I/O device uh, to the uh, to cell B. Synergy. Cell is not a single processor, right? This is a, a non-homogeneous multi-core system, and each of them perform a very specific function. The open system running on this one is Linux. Linux is a Linux different version of Linux distro, a Fedora Core 5. We also seen that on this one over here, I run the yellow dog. I also can run Debian, I can run Ubuntu, I can run any, so far, any Linux version. That one, that version, that Linux will run on the PPE. On the SPEs, dedicated just for computational only, right? And so, very clear distinction between the two. And do we do any scheduling? Do we do any any um, any timing tasks and so on down the SPE? No, everything we done on the PPE only. The software environment we provide some for development uh, environments on the left side, the tools and the debug and performance tools and so on. Mr. and tool, those guys that you seen before, right? On the right hand, we have the sample workload shipped in your SDK and SPE management libraries, so we can manage the, um, the SPE, create, a, create an SPE, uh, queue an SPE, release an SPE, and so on, create an SPE group, for example. We have a Linux PowerPC 64 with cell extensions to support to run on the cell BE here, Very, ver verification hypervisor, Supported by the PowerPC and the hardware and system level simulator, which use it to develop your, your code and the language extension ABI. Okay, the system simulator. This is the uh, the simulator we talked about. Uh, the past couple of slides. This is an overview of the simulator. Uh, here, we have a two user interface for the simulator. We have a command line interface, and we have a, a GUI interface for the simulator. So as a programmers, when you bring up the simulator, this simulator will boot a Linux version. Okay, this is uh, two dots, um, uh, I think that's that, uh, four dots, dot, dot, dot 18, two dot six dot 18. That Linux version represents the fully uh, implemented Linux version on the cell. <coughs> okay, now on the native system, you of course don't have a simulator, right? This simulator exists only if you run, if you do your cross development, use the x86 base as the cross development platform. You write the application on your native, you know, on your x86 base or x86 64, and then you compile, you bring the binary in inside of the simulator, and then you run it. And this is what's providing in here. Okay, have a different simulator environment. We go more details in this. Okay. This is some short. Let me go back here a little bit, a uh, little bit too fast. When you bring up, this is the, the GUI interface for the simulator. On your left here, you, on your left side, you have the resources of the of the cell. Here we describe only two uh, PC, PPC zero and PPC one, right? And then a uh, SPU. And then on the right hand side, you have the control of the simulator where you issue the com some commands to control the execution, running, stopping, collection of data, and so on. Okay. And here's the, the um, simulate environment. And this window here, when you bring the simulator up, it will boot Linux and display in this window. We call it the simulated window. And some of the data that you can look at from, um, uh, from the statistical point of view or from the resource point of view. Okay, breakpoint. You can set a breakpoint. Uh, this is some graphic, nice graphic. You can you can see that one as well. All right. Then Linux on 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 the cell is a patches that 2.618 PowerPC kernel, PowerPC 64, and support SPE um, threads in a, as an API. So everything has been extended to the Linux, and it is part of the mainstream as well. If you go to linuxkernel.org. And you download your Linux in there, you would see you know, so a lot of patches that, that came in. If you're a member of the 
Linux open source community is one of the developers you see a lot of of patches you know from from the from the from the cell that's went into the, the main line okay now this one available you know the older fixes available from the Barcelona supercomputing center SPE management libraries I mentioned this before so that we can manage the SPE as a threat under the Linux environment some workload we've shown here uh, physical uh, simulations a physics simulation here subdivision surface on the mesh and then you know refining the that mesh uh, to make it um, to, to show a, a really a graphics a rendering a very nice image of the head here the Terran rendering engine is another example that we, uh, that we showed here that um, superimpose a tech a satellite image which has elevations um, data uh, superimposed on top of a, 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 a flat Terran image and render that image on the 3D versions on your on one of the um, the display and real nice and displayed here. Performance tools as static analysis, SPU timing, dynamic analysis, running on the system simulator or profile FDPR Pro. I mentioned that before. Uh, the the Selby, uh, Selby IDE Eclipse Eclipse base. Uh, which uh, was built on top of the Eclipse SDK here and then the, uh, the CNC++ development toolkit CDT and we put in the, um, the, the, the plug-in for the cell and create an environment for you to write your programs um, really, really nice. Software design considerations. We have a two level of parallelism here in cell. We have a regular vector engine, right? We have a PP vector engine. We have a SP vector engine as well, right? Each of them can run a number of instructions with different data elements concurrently. And then on top of that one, we have the, the concept of tasking, the threading. We can, you, you have a, 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 a task on the Linux can be partitioned to different threads as well. So we have at the high level and the low level low level we have a different level of concurrency or parallelism running all the time computer computational wise we have the simd engines we have a parallel sequence distributed over a spe and one ppe and then we have a 256k byte local store for sp usage the, the spe remember we have about the, um, the spu and we have the local store Local store, we only have a 256k byte only. And so we have to deal with that one. We have to think about, hey, this, this memory is so small, how can I fit my program? Okay, that's one of the issues. Communicational, we have the DMAID and bus bandwidth. We have uh, some mechanisms we can transfer data, okay, as fast as possible. How do we leverage that transfer speed? And how do we support the data? How do we supply the data? to all these tasks running on our SPE, okay? Typical cell software development flow would be going through the algorithm complexity study. Traditional one, do the same thing. We go to data layout, locality, and do some data flow analysis, you know, so the dependency studies on your data, on your, and some dependency on the control flow of your, your, of your program, the same thing, right? So, basically, we do the same thing up to this point. However, then we, we said that now we have a PPE, we have a SPE. We let take a look at the PPE program. We develop some PPE control, right? And then we, we say that, okay, let the code, the first code be the Scala code. Develop that code on the PPE as a Scala code. And then we have a Scala set of Scala code now. We say that let's partition that Scala code down to the SPE. We partition to SPE code. And then we take care of communications, we take care of synchronization, latency handling, how do we hide the time, the delay, and so on within our programs. And then we transform the Scala code to the SIMD code, to the vector code. So involved, traditionally, we, we, we look at the algorithms, complexity, we study the same thing. And we take that code, we develop on the PPE. And then we break down the application, the data, so we can send to each of the SPE, providing some sort of mechanisms that, um, that control that um, synchronization. And then we transform that code into the SIMD, vectorize that code, 
rebalance, try running the first time, second time using some performance tool analysis here. Analyze the data, the behavior, and then finalize your code. Tuning, performance tuning is never end task, right? So we keep on tuning and then finalize, you know, checking on the factorizing code and so on. So this is the typical self software development flow that we normally recommend you to, to go through. Recommending is one thing, but you don't have to go through this, of course, right? Performance wise, we have a listing here on the floating point single precision, floating point double precision, integers, and integers 16 bit and 32 bit, right? On the red one over here, floating point single precision, extremely fast, extremely good on the cell. This, is the, this chart here compared the performance of the PowerPC 970. Multiprocessing, there's two, uh, two cores here running at 2.5 gigahertz compared against the cell broadband engine running at 3.2 gigahertz. We're cheating a little bit over here between 2.5 and 3.2, but it's not a whole lot. But we see tremendous jumps in the floating point single precision performance from red right here and the blue right here. Integers, multiplication, 16 bit or 32 bit, very good. The uh, performance of the double precisions here remain almost the same, slightly better, but not, uh, not um, extremely high, or not as, uh, the, um, the improvement is not as high as, as in the other cases. The reason why, because when we designed the, uh, the processor, that was designed to support the game industry, right? And then the focus was then, then was to focus on performance of the single precision. To, um, um, to improve the performance of the different precision, we're working in the labs now, and in the, in the chart I show you the roadmap of the hardware, we will release a version of the enhanced double precision performance on the next, on the next year, so in the, within the 2007-2008. So we do recognize some performance problem. We, you know, we, um, we, we fulfill some of the demands from the markets, depend on the market as well. Some market does not need to have a very high uh, double precision um, uh, performance, but some is really required, and we will meet those uh, those requirements as well. This is the, uh, the this chart here show you the performance uh, difference between the um, 3.2 gigahertz general purpose uh, processors and uh, the 3.2 gigahertz cell uh, probably engine and different application area. High performance computing, graphics, security, video processing, and this is the type of algorithms that we're going through. And this is the performance improvement, the performance of the um, 2.2 gigahertz um, GP, GPP, for example, in this case. And then on this, with this, we've seen it here, uh, running on the cell, we were able to perform to outperform this one about um, eight times, right? Performance improvement about AX. Depending on the um, how many SPE that we run here, in this case we run a ASPE. In this case one SPE. This is per cell here, 30 frames, um, one frames in this environment, and then in the G5, which is the power PC here, running run, uh, this is the, the 970, and running against the, the cell here, the power performance improvement about 12x on the cell. So we did see some really performance improvements and some. Aspect very fast, uh, okay, with very um, significant improvement as well. Key performance characteristics, what set us apart from the tra traditional architectures. If you look at the single processor, single processor will be about the same. The key point is that we have, we offer eight SPE. So when, whenever you're running something and you distributed your workload on the different, on the eight SPE, we can go, we can see that a immediate improvement of AX right away. And some with some tweaking, some tuning, some uh, rewriting or retuning of your application, we can see 20X, 50X. And some application, we can say that, you know, up to 100X, okay? The cell plate, this is the cell plate we have now. We have the cell processors, and we have the two plate here, and we have a one gigabyte of XDR memory, okay? And then we, this is the, uh, the way that we put in the, that cell plate on the cell plate chassis would have 14 slots, and the, each of the cell plate tech would take two slots, so we have seven cell plate in this chassis here. 
in this configuration, that this is the same conf configuration the QS20. And, and then this is how we connect the system together, either go through the, uh, to, to form an XMP system or to form a clustering system. Okay, this is the rotor computer rack. This is the one that we plan to connect all of the, the, um, we pro, um, the, the, the basic um, AMD systems connected to the, the cell BE as an accelerator. Application affinities. This is a kind of application we look at. These are features on the left, left, left panel here. You have a different features of the cell. And this is the kind of function that we believe that, that could be accelerated, could be improved, could be running faster on the cell. And here we belong to different group of, of applications. Okay. And here's a different target for um, on our in industry. We look at AND, aerospace and defense. We look at petroleum industry, seismic data processing, public and finance, FSS, industrial, um, on the uh, semiconductor LCD here, medical imaging, uh, key application areas for the cell broadband engine here. Communications, consumer, digital content creation, uh, media platform, video surveillance is a, some very, very key application and extremely when you apply, when you, 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 up, when you pull those applications to the cell, you would see a tremendous jump in performance. With the futures of the cell BEs, we're moving from the, from the punch cards uh, 20 years, 30 years ago, and up to the client server here, and then now we, we get into the immersive interaction for the online gaming. Okay? And then these are kind of applications from the window, click and wait, client centric, we move into immersive, we move to real time and distributed. When we, uh, a lot of uh, data that have to be accessed, that, that we need to access everywhere, right? On your palm, on your, on your cell phone, for example. And the wireless, always on, and text messaging, blocks. And now we look at some of the digital world we're dealing with. Um, from the text-based search engine, you have a Google, you have Intomi, you ha now you have a graphic-based, image-based searching. Given a fact of, you know, some things like a, a, a picture is going to your screen, right? Capture that picture and capture the text base and then retrieve the data. You know, what does it mean to us, right, from, the, from this piece of data? From, you know, on, look at the bottom of your TV screen, whatever, it's running through with some pictures capture that and then tell us, you know, and then save that one so we can retrieve it later on. Natural information processing, like a human brain, we do not need the mouse. I still need the mouse over here, right? You, you saw me from the beginning until now. I, my, my finger is still pointing to the mouse, pointer here, I move the mouse. Why can't I go here and, and move my finger, my pointing, right? And some camera capture my gesture, right? And point to this one instead of me, my finger here. That's my natural gesture, right? Instead of my unnatural gesture over here. So this kind of application, we move on and we can see that certain application areas is, is a candidate for the cell here. Dynamically increase of data volumes. We're facing a large set of data volume, every one of us. From here or in the US or anywhere that I go, right? I use my, I flash my credit card. My data is there, it's ready for me, but you know, I flash, I swipe it through, and then I sign, that's all. Behind that one, they store my data, my record, my date of birth, my bank records, where I've been through, how much I have left in my card there. And sometimes I say, that, well, I'm sorry, I cannot, you know, process your card here. Whoops, you know, those things happen, but they capture my data everywhere, right? every year, and every single moment. You can see that one over here, you know, we, cre we created, um, 800 megabyte of data now is just every year we increase that one. 300 megabyte of data. That's not included, that's a text base, not, includes, not including my pictures. A picture of my family posted somewhere in the web, right? They can download this one as well, too. How do you process that one? X ray of human body, last set of data, 20, mega, up 20 megabyte is, is low, right? Digital video, 10 megabyte per minute. This video camera here captures a lot of data, right? Put it somewhere. Retrieving that data and processing that data. Just imagine this one camera. You have a, a thousand cameras watching you at the airport, right? Or a, a city, you know, anywhere in the city except 
mobile, maybe it's no camera, right? You can drive left and right, nobody cares, right? But anywhere, I, I, that's where the Brazil, oh, the system all over. The cameras on the highway as well. If you pass, if you exceed the speed limit at night, right? It's flash, you see the flash? The camera took your picture, take a pictures of, of your car, of your license plate at 9 p.m. in the dark, you see? So where the set of data we, we, we go to? Somewhere, some, somehow, right? Uh, we have to capture that one. Another way that we look at that's what is of now, when you buy a PC, right? You buy a, 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 an AMD or so on, and you go now and buy a nice graphic card from and, and NVIDIA or some other um, um, ATI or so on. So you can process that data, right? That graphics, nice graphics. You have a CPU in there, you have a memory in there, and so on. On the cell base, you know, we said we go ahead, we, all of those things can be processed with inside, within the cell, inside of the cell, right? We have the accelerators. We do the processing, we process the image and render the image, process the data of the image and render the image for you. Instead of, you know, having a separate GPU, graphic processing units, processing the unit for the, 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 uh, the image for you, as we have now. Here's the look at the traditional graphic based um, processor, right? We have uh, the CPU here, we have memory, we have a knowledge uh, connecting to the GPU graphics processing units over here. The cell bridge connect to the I.O., right? And accelerators with some, you know, uh, um, companies working on some accelerators to do uh, to, to help the CPU here perform some specific operation. On the cell side, we have a 164-bit power PC right here, and we have the, this memory controller. The tight memory is very tight, right? We use a very high-speed XDR memories, okay? And we have a set of processors, we call the SPE. Eight of them can perform those operations concurrently, and we have a, a multi-core system right there. Without adding anything like the accelerators so on, all of your accelerators, all these functions being performed by each of those SPE. And then you have a flex I.O. to connect to your, your I.O. and so on. So some things you have, uh, for you to look at in the future is like the specialization in computer architectures. Beyond the OS application, what's, speci what's uh, speci specialization makes sense in the general purpose chip design, okay? And also the programming paradigms, programming changing. We are not programming a single core system, a dual core system, an SMP system, an Enuma system even, right? We are moving to a different programming environment here. A lot of you, I think that, you know, working on the multi-core and programming the multi-core from the Intel base and so on and the MD base, and that's a little bit different than the multi-core in this area here. Okay, here we have a set of homogeneous, eight of them, and, and one different, you know, so we can partition our task. The other ends, you, you must have, or you would have, you know, one uh, set of cores, you know, two or four on a single socket or two sockets tied together. Okay, and each of them still a replicate of a single core. Fully, fully, you know, a full implementation of level one, level two cache, and so on, and level three, and so on, the partition. That environment is different than this environment. Programming in this environment is different, a little bit different than what I just described. And the new types of application as well. All right, so that's my summarize. And then let me, you want to take a break now? Or?